Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to meeting number 458 of the Town of Grand Falls Windsor Council, and uh, it's February 23rd. And we got a lot of special guests here this evening with us, and we're going to call on some of those special guests very soon. Before we get into our regular meeting, there is some proclamation business to take care of. And the first proclamation I'll read, which uh, doesn't deal with anybody in the chamber, it's for World Plumbing Day, which is March the 11th, 2016. And I'll go ahead and read this. It says, whereas every person on the planet is affected by the availability of clean drinking water and basic sanitation, whereas in many developing countries, plumbing is either very limited or even non-existent, and the lack of an effective infrastructure is a huge factor in the tragic statistics which show that an unacceptably high proportion of the world population does not have access to safe water or to effective sanitation systems. The World Health Organization estimates that over 3 million children under the age of 5 die each year due to water-related diseases. Simple plumbing solutions could make all the difference in saving lives. Whereas with an increased global focus on climate change, the plumbing industry is a major player whether in relation to water conservation, use and reuse issues, and in the installation and maintenance of equipment using renewable sources of energy. Whereas the Mechanical Contractors Association of Canada, the Canadian Institute of Plumbing and Heating, and the World Plumbing Council, along with related organizations around the world, will join together on March the 11th, 2016, to raise awareness of the importance of proper plumbing in relation to protecting the planet and its citizens. Therefore, for I, Barry Manuel, the mayor of Grand Falls, Windsor, do hereby proclaim March the 11th, 2016, as World Plumbing Day in the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. And that's signed on this date of February 23rd, 2016. Okay, moving right along. Another proclamation and flag raising. Actually, this week we had the Scout Guide flag proudly raised outside Town Hall, and that'll remain that way all week. And we've got some uh, representatives here this evening from the Scouts and Guides. So before I read this proclamation, I'll ask you guys to come forward. Come on up here behind me, guys. You can just file on in uh, behind me there if you would. We got room for everybody here? Good? Okay. Proclamation, February 23rd, 2016. Whereas the mission of Scouts Canada is to educate young people, boys and girls, through a value system based on the Scout promise and law with the ultimate goal of building a better world where people and self are self-fulfilled as individuals and play a constructive role in society. And the mission of Girl Guides of Canada is to challenge girls and women in their personal development and empower them to be confident, resourceful, courageous and responsible citizens. Girl Guides of Canada and Scouts Canada are to be recognized and commended for instilling personal values, respect for the environment, responsible citizenship, and the principle of service in young Canadians. Now, therefore, I, Barry Manuel, Mayor of the Town of Grand Falls, Windsor, do hereby proclaim February 20th to the 26th, 2016, as Scout Guide Week in the Town of Grand Falls, Windsor, to recognize the valuable contribution made to the well-being of our community by Girl, Gu Girl Guides of Canada and Scouts Canada. And I'll go ahead and sign here. Now we have also have a couple of representatives here from Scouts and Guides that I'll ask to sign three sheets. So I know uh, Shan Lee is here 
for guides, for scouts, sorry, Shanley, my apologies. Go ahead and sit, uh, sit and you can have your uh, signature there, there, and there. And we won't tell you what the fine print says. Okay. <laughs> and do we have a representative to sign? Excellent. I'm going to get you guys to switch out now. You can come in. Shirlan, is it your name? Shirlan. Shirlan? Shirlan? Shirlan. Shirlan. I'll get it right. Shirlan. 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 Okay. Have a seat, Shirlan. Sorry about that. And I'll give you the pen now, and you can sign your name right here, here, and here. Lots of important documents here this evening. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to ask Shan Lee now to come forward. I think Shan Lee is going to have a few words to say on behalf of the scouts and guides. Shan Lee? Um, we just wanted to say thank you for our supporting our Europe trip we did this past summer and also for your continuous support to our scouting group and the Fourth Gen Fox and Gen Fox. Thank you very much. I guess we'll pose for a, a little picture here. And I will say on behalf of council, thank you very much. And I know we've talked about it in this chamber several occasions, what a great job our leaders and volunteers do in Grand Falls, Windsor, for the Scout and Guide movement. And uh, such great participation as well. You know, I know you're always busy. You're always up to something. Usually involves a lot of fun. And we'd encourage you to keep doing that. And you've been great ambassadors in the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. So thank you very much. Thank you. And again. <laughs> thank you, guys. I don't know if you can have a look at that or not, but that's a picture from the trip last year, which we also talked a lot about. And I know uh, Jason is still talking about it, I think, right? <laughs> and on and upward to the next uh, trip that's being planned. But it's obviously a lifetime experience for the kids to be able to participate in this. And I know just by following on face Facebook and that when you guys went over uh, the time that you had was certainly an experience of a lifetime. So congratulations and thanks once again. We'll hang this proudly summer around town hall. Okay, I'll get you guys now. You can move back to your seat so you can enjoy the rest of the meeting. <laughs> Yes, there are. They actually uh, should get a copy each, and we'll keep one for ourselves. So I'll make sure that they get those. And okay, okay. And next, filing in behind me for another proclamation. And I guess youth is a good theme for this evening, as behind me uh, are the members, or at least some of the members of the. Grand Falls Windsor Allied Youth Organization. Welcome, guys. So I know you guys also do great work in the community and have been doing so for a long time, so we're proud to read this proclamation. And it's Allied Youth Newfoundland and Labrador. Proclamation Allied Youth Week 2016. The slogan is, Be the Heart of Your Community. Whereas Allied Youth is an organization for people in grades 7 through 12, whereas Allied Youth posts are in many communities throughout Newfoundland and Labrador, whereas Allied Youth is celebrating their community and school involvement, whereas Allied Youth encourages members to make choices that reflect a healthy, healthy lifestyle, and whereas Allied Youth allows students to run their own posts 
and make decisions at the post level. I declare that February 21st to the 27, 2016 will be Allied Youth Week in Grand Falls, Windsor, Newfoundland. And I'll sign. And again, I've got a representative here somewhere, I believe. Sarah, oh, come on sorry. in, Sarah, and sign away your life. <laughs> sure. Well, I don't have, I can kneel down, though. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And Sarah, did you want to uh, have a short word to say? Speak, speak. Just mention our food drive. It's very relevant. Sure. Um, this week is Allied Youth Week, and I'm the president of our post here in Grand Falls, Windsor. Our uh, things we have to do this week is we have to have um, a fill-up drive. So what we're going to do is on Thursday, we are going to be at Sobeys from 4 to 8 collecting food items for our local food bank. And this Saturday from 11 to 6, we are going to be at Mary Brown's. And every dollar from every meal sold is going to go towards our post to help us do more things in the community. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks again, guys. Again, there's not, you know, uh, much more I can say other than I know what a great job you do. I've been involved with groups before who benefited from Allied Youth. And I know you put always good causes that you support. And congratulations. Keep up the good work. And we certainly appreciate what you do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Sarah. Oh, thank you. We're, you know, everybody, we're more than happy to support you. <laughs> yeah, I got, uh, this one is just one more copy to show. So I'm going to photocopy this and get it in. But that's theirs. Now save one of those for us, would you? Amy, please. There's only one copy, so we'll have to get uh, copied. Okay. There you go, Mike. And we'll just uh, give a second to say farewell to our friends, our young friends who are not going to stick around and enjoy the meeting. The gallery is shrinking. Okay, once again, I'd just like to welcome everybody to Town of Grand Falls, Windsor, regular council meeting number 458. And uh, now that we got our proclamations done, we'll move into the regular order of business for this evening. So first we'll look for an adoption to the minutes of meeting number 457. Uh, looking for Councillor Finn and Councillor Moores. Any errors or omissions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Any business arising out of the minutes? Hearing none. Disbursement report. Councillor Pinsent. It's been moved by Councillor Pinsent. Looking for a seconder. Councillor Moores. Any discussion on the disbursement report? Hearing none. All those in favor? Country minded? Motion carried. Moving right along, we'll get into the committee reports. First up is Public Works and Planning, Deputy Mayor Finn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Public Works and Planning Committee met on Thursday, February 4th at 4.30 p.m. Present were Councillor Amy Cody Davis, Councillor Tom Pinson, Councillor Bruce Moores, Mayor Barry Manuel, Town Manager Mike Pinson, Director of Engineering and Works Jeff Saunders, and of course myself. Issues discussed, snow clearing. The committee discussed snow clearing during the storm on January 29th and 30th. This was a significant snowfall with high winds, made conditions much worse. 
the town is divided into nine zones plus small dead end streets and parking lots. Sidewalks are addressed when streets are cleared. As a priority, main arterial, arterial, arterials and school zones would be cleared first. We have to keep in mind that someone has to be first and others have to be at the end of the route. Staff do reverse, do reverse routes when possible. Breakdown of equipment will cause additional delays in getting some areas and this is unavoidable. During normal snowfalls, streets are mainly passable and vehicles can usually get to the main roads that would be clear. In stormy conditions when roads are blocked, Residents are reminded that, that our fire and emergency services are available to assist with emergencies. Our staff are also in contact with hospital staff, and if our services are required to assist an ambulance, then escort will be provided. The committee recommends that staff continue to monitor snow clearing operations and adjust as necessary. Snow clearing and removal can be a frustrating experience for residents as well as staff. We ask residents to be patient and to contact our after hours phone number at 489-0430 and these concerns will be passed along to the supervisor on call. Speed notification signs. The committee discussed the preliminary information that has been downloaded from the signs. The information includes number of vehicles, speed, dates, times, and the information that can be used to develop tables, charts, and graphs that provide useful information at a glance. Once noticeable, <clears throat> one noticeable positive result is the number of vehicles speeding has been reduced by up to 50%. The committee recommends that staff continue to monitor the information and develop reports as required. The committee also recommends moving them periodically and consider the purchase of other signs as part of the budget process. LED information sign adjacent to Dominion. The committee discussed a proposal for an LED sign, LED information sign to be located on the town owned property on Cromer Avenue adjacent to the Dominion store. The committee recommends acceptance of $500 per month lease rate for land to erect the LED sign. Other conditions will be as per the town's sign regulations. Station Road name change. The committee had a request to change Station Road to Meany Road in memory of Father Meany. There was one registered phone call and one formal letter objecting to objecting the suggested name change. The committee recommends that Station Road not be renamed Meany Road. <coughs> Rezoning Main Street West residential land from RS2 to RS1. A notice to rezone Main Street West land from RS2 to RS1 was recently advertised and one letter was received from a resident. The letter was not objecting to the zoning change but refers to the type of housing to be permitted. The committee recommend, is recommending no change in the rezoning document to be presented at the next committee meeting for adoption for a recommendation to adopt. Town funded capital. The committee reviewed and discussed a list of engineering and works town funded capital requests and recommend it be presented at the next committee of the whole meeting. Street name request, corduroy developers. Another street will be constructed in the corduroy developers subdivision this season and we'll need to assign a name. The committee recommends that names be selected that, excuse me, the committee recommends that the names as selected recently be used and the top name, DeWire, be the street name. The remaining names are as follows. Mullally, Cohen, Chow, Lindahl, and Pitcher. These, when these names are exhausted, another list will be generated from submissions on file. Street name request, Tate. The committee discussed a street name request from the Tate family. They have asked that the Tate name be used in the proposed residential development on the family land at 43 Grandpa Heights. The committee recommends that the present list as selected be used and therefore this request be denied. Correspondence will be placed on file to be considered when the next list is selected. 
correspondence, Mr. Thompson. The committee reviewed correspondence concerning his request to develop a residential cul-de-sac behind his property on Goodyear Avenue. This would extend between Cranley Place and Dunn Place. The committee recommends that the previous decision made last year be upheld and the request be denied. Land request related holdings number 8 and 10 Duggan Street. The committee discussed a request from related holdings to purchase additional land at the rear of their property at number 8 and 10 Duggan Street. The committee recommends the request be approved. The land the amount of land to be sold will be depending on the existing greenbelt, which must be maintained. Staff will discuss the requirements with the applicant. The meeting adjourned at 6.50 p.m. And Mr. Mayor, I move the recommendations and report of this committee. Okay, it's been moved by Deputy <coughs> Mayor Finn. Looking for a seconder, uh, Councillor Cody Davis. Any discussion on the, Councillor Pinson? Road. I'd just like to point out that uh, there's a number of residents in that area will probably want to know why we did it. And uh, one of the major objections actually came from the church itself. So I think it's important that we point that out that, uh, you know, St. Joseph's Parish Council, they objected to having the name changed. So that was a reason more than just one official complaint. I think it's important to point that out to the residents. I think they, uh, just to add to that, uh, Councillor Pinson, I think they suggest that maybe another street in town uh, would be appropriate for uh, uh, naming after Meany. Um, and on that point, when it comes to street names, just so that the uh, residents are aware, you know, we get a bunch of requests and there's been many, many, many requests over the years of uh, people, families, friends and that who put names forward to have streets named in town in memory or in honor recognition of uh, certain people. Uh, or in some cases more than one person from the same family. Uh, what we decided to do uh, last year was to go through all the requests that were on file, which I believe there's you know at least 30 or so I would think at this point, um, and they continue to come in, and to prioritize the list. Uh, we also get a lot of requests from the Legion. Uh, so we asked the Legion to prioritize their list for us, and we prioritized the town list and then council uh, basically debated a bit about where, you know, based on the arguments that were made, and we came out with the list so that there would be no uh, really uh, thought process having to go into this at this point, that we have six names on the list, as was noted. Uh, I will note, I think the next name on the list is, is actually Malloy. I think uh, Deputy Mayor Finn... I think, yeah, and I, I just want to clarify so people know. But now the Public Works Department, when a street name is to be named, they'll just pick the next one on, off the list. When we get close to or at the end of uh, the list that's there, we'll look at the ones that are on file and once again prioritize the list and move forward again. And certainly all the names that uh, I've seen that have been put forward, and I think everybody feels the same way, are worthy of, of recognition we only get so many new streets in town, and we can only do it one at a time, so we'll continue that process going forward. Any other uh, discussion? Deputy Mayor Finn. Um, also, uh, Deputy Mayor, on the topic of street naming, uh, renaming a street, uh, although it didn't become an, uh, an, a major issue in this particular re request because we didn't, in fact, make an effort. We didn't actually have to make a decision to change the street name. But renaming a street name is very inconvenient for the people that are set up on the street. So, you know, council would change your street name very reluctantly. There are like on, in this particular area, there's a business located, there's some residential property and the inconvenience of changing your civic address after being established in an area for 20, 30, 40 years, may, and in parts of our town long, longer, you know, something that, you know, council would, I, I, I would very reluctantly, I shouldn't speak for council, I would be very reluctant to change a street name unless the reason is very compelling. Uh, because of the inconvenience for others, I'll be, I'll, you know, even though, in this case, the residents and the businesses in the area we're accommodating are not objecting. That the, their, their, uh, the fact that they didn't object does not mean it's inconvenient. 
and I just uh, just wanted to point that out. The other thing Mr Mayor I wanted to speak to in the minutes uh, was the speed signs and the because uh, uh, we do get uh, some valuable information from them. In the speed sign in the area of the College of the North, North Atlantic uh, has reduced speeds uh, by about 40%. Uh, the average speed has reduced by 40%. Uh, in the area of Harris Avenue, the, uh, there's a 50% reduction in speeders. And on Main Street, uh, there's a 50%, excuse me, a 40% reduction in speeders. So significant uh, reductions uh, in just a very short period of time. Uh, also, Mr. Mayor, uh, we get uh, other valuable information from these uh, um, uh, from these speed signs. They they do gather uh, vehicle counts, so vehicle counts are good uh, are good commercial information uh, for businesses that want to decide to set up in an area or expand. They want uh, business would want no vehicle counts. Uh, some of the vehicle counts uh, in the northbound direction uh, around the, uh, on Harris Avenue are around uh, 6,500 vehicle passes a day. Um, on Harris mm -hmm. Avenue, uh, just let me see, I'm going to go. Chrome, uh, Cromer Avenue near uh, the college, it's around 4,000 vehicle passes. And Main Street, uh, in that location, there is around uh, 2,800. That's quite not, not an average. We get all the vehicle counts are there. So, you know, you get, some, you get the, a sense of the number of vehicle counts are there uh, that are passing by there a day. And, it's, and they're pretty consistent with what our traffic study indicated to us about three years ago at different intersections. Um, so, um, you know, the traffic uh, counts are very high. You know, when you got 5,000 vehicle passes uh, a day, so speeding is a very important issue for 5,000 users in one direction. Absolutely. So just want to point that out. Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Finn. And, you know, as we mentioned at our last meeting, and I know Deputy Mayor did some uh, media uh, on this speed sign issue, and they are mobile, too. They're somewhat easy to move around. Uh, we possibly will be purchasing two more and uh, we will be moving those around to different areas in town. And the data that the deputy mayor refers to, before the signs were actually turned on, they were still functioning by collecting that information. And if someone's wondering what we're comparing the data to, well, that's what it is. And the two weeks or so before the signs were turned on, it was still uh, recording all the information in terms of number of vehicles, the average speed, the speed per vehicle, uh, yeah, how many times a day. And we will continue to monitor that because, of course, there's all kinds of different factors that uh, can influence the number of traffic. You could have a snowstorm. You could have, uh, uh, you know, anything could be different uh, weather conditions that could affect that for sure. So I just wanted to point that out. Any other discussion, comments on the public works minutes? The last thing I'll add before I ask for uh, acceptance of the minutes is with regards to the snow clearing. And uh, I know it's been a pretty mild winter, really. We did have a uh, uh, rain day last week that took away most of our snow, and I believe there's some more coming uh, this Friday that likely will take away, if not all of it, well, most of it. But we still have had a couple of significant snowfalls, and it always is the case that people, you know, uh, want to know when they're being plowed, how come the plow is not here yet. Well, basically, there's a map of the town, as the Deputy Mayor said in the minutes, that we prioritize the routes. There's a different piece of equipment that is assigned to each route, and we have that. I won't show it here now on the iPad, but I will say that anybody wants to uh, come by and see me uh, at the town hall or contact anybody else, I'm sure they'd be willing to show them a copy of this to see what we go by. And as it says in the minutes, it's disappointing, I know, but when you're driving equipment from point A to point B on these routes, Someone has to be first and someone has to be last. We try our best to prioritize it, and uh, I feel we do a really good job. Our staff does a good job with the snow clearing, and usually uh, things are cleaned up really quickly, and certainly there's sometimes that conditions are, make it very difficult for us to, to do that quickly. So we ask for continued patience when it comes to the snow clearing, and we'll continue to uh, try to do the best that we can. 
So with that said, uh, we have a mover and a seconder for the public works minutes. All those in favor? All right. Can't remind it? Motion carried. Next up, we have Parks, Recreation, and Special Events. Councillor Cody Davis. Thank you. The Parks, Recreation, and Special Events Committee met on Tuesday, February 2nd at 4.30. In attendance, Mayor Manuel, Councillor Moores, Councillor Cody Davis, Councillor Pinsent, and Deputy Mayor Finn. Staff were Mike Pinsent, Town Manager Clerk, and Keith Antle, the Director of Parks and Recreation. The Minor Soccer Association meeting with the executive. The Exploits Minor Hockey, or sorry, Minor Soccer Association made a presentation to the committee highlighting the support their association would like from the town. Their two main requests were to see an increase in their community organization grant and the need for a second soccer field as their program has grown to over 300 kids. The committee discussed their presentation and recommends the Director of Parks and Recreation look at the allocations of all our community organization grants as well as work with the engineering department to look at the cost involved to reuse existing area on Centennial Field that could be turned into a second soccer field. Correspondence from the Sparkling Blades Figure Skating Club. The committee discussed correspondence from the Figure Skating Club requesting their year-end ice show be moved to April the 24th to accommodate a professional skater to be part of the show. The committee recommends this be approved with all ice times and expenses to be paid for by the Figure Skating Club. Winter Lude Update. The Director of Parks and Recreation presented the Winter Lude brochure that will be delivered to all households during the week of February 1st to the 5th. This year's carnival takes place February 12th to 15th with lots of activities for all ages. All citizens are urged to get out and get involved. The Midwinter Biver Update. The Director of Parks and Recreation gave an update on the Midwinter Biver, which is scheduled for February 19th and 20th. Registration is going really well with very few spots still available. Residents are urged to register online at midwinterbiver.com as soon as possible as tickets are expected to be sold out very soon. Sutherland Drive, Goodger Avenue Landscaping. The committee discussed the plans to finish both the Sutherland Drive Splash Pad and Goodger Avenue Baseball Complex. The committee recommends the Director of Parks and Recreation work with the Engineering Department to finalize a plan for parking and landscaping at both of these facilities. Dog Park Correspondence. The committee discussed correspondence from dog park users noting that they would like to get access outside the park's fencing to retrieve dog toys. The town manager clerk informed the committee that this land that is that this is land that the public are not permitted to access and that any time access is needed, users are asked to contact Parks and Recreation. Skidoo Quad Trail Connection. The committee discussed correspondence from residents in the Sullivan Street area requesting trail access to the track bed. An existing trail has been closed off due to new housing development on Party Place. The committee recommends the Parks and Recreation Department apply for funding to cut a trail that will link the existing trail with the track bed. Grant funding to, to community organizations. The committee discussed the current town grant funding policies available to user groups. The committee directed the Parks and Recreation Director to review all these grants to see if it is necessary to make any revisions. The meeting adjourned at 8 p.m. and I move the recommendations and report of this committee. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Cody Davis and seconded by Councillor Morse. Any discussion, comments on the Parks and Rec minutes? None? If that's the case, all those in favor? Aye. Country minded? Motion carried. <laughs> Committee of the Whole, Deputy Mayor Finn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just let me cue it up here. The Committee of the Whole met on February 15th at 7 p.m. This is Monday. Present were Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Barry Manuel, Councillors Amy Cody Davis, Councillor Bruce Moore, Councillor Tom Pinsent, Town Manager Mike Pinsent, Director of Engineering Work Jeff Saunders, Director of Finance Barry Griffin, Director of Parks and Recreation Keith Antle. Town Funded Capital, the committee discussed the request 
the requested town fund capital submitted by the department heads. The committee recommends that the attached listing totaling $674,000. <clears> the budget amount was $750,000. Three projects are awaiting further information. Drapery for Joe Byrne Memorial Stadium, $30,000. Bunker Gear Washing Machine, $22,000, and three, Parks and Recreation Scheduling Software, $15,000. Grand Falls, Windsor Day. The committee recommends that July 18, 2016 be declared as Grand Falls, Windsor Day, and that the Salmon Festival weekend be held on July 14 to the 18, 2016. Brand items tender, the committee reviewed the recent tenders for the 25th anniversary brand items. The committee recommends that the brand items be purchased. Exploits Regional Services Board Agreement. The committee reviewed the new agreement between four municipalities servicing the serviced by the water treatment plant at Northern Arm Pond. The old agreement included the waste disposal operation and needed to be revised. The new agreement refers to the Exploits Regional Water Supply Committee. The committee recommends that the revised agreement be approved for signatures. Long-term care. The committee reviewed the long-term care needs assessment report as prepared for Central Health by Ernest and Young. The committee has serious concerns with the report in the way the geography and demographics were presented. The committee recommends that council meet with the CEO of Central Health and the minister and Minister Al Hawkins to discuss to discuss the request. The meeting adjourned at 9:30 p.m. Mr. Mayor, I move the recommendations and report of this committee. It has been moved by Deputy Mayor Finn <coughs> and seconded by Councillor Moores. Any discussion on the minutes? Uh, I got a couple things there. I'll mention. Uh, the long-term long care uh, report. We did have an opportunity last Friday to meet with Minister Hawkins to discuss that, as well as MHA Dean was in attendance. And uh, amongst other issues, that was one of the ones that we had some discussion on, and we will continue to do so. Obviously, 64 bids in Grand Falls, Windsor for long-term care is well, well short of what we require. And uh, we certainly hope when the time comes to add beds that we are looked at as we should be with the statistics and the demographics that we're dealing with here and all the other facts that we have and we've been bringing forward that we will continue to do. We also uh, made contact with the, uh, the CEO of uh, Central Health, but unfortunately she was on the road and has been on the road, and I think a way now, and maybe even out of the country or at least uh, out of the province for the next little while, but she has made a commitment that when she returns, she will speak to us about the report as well. So we are uh, pursuing that. The Salmon Festival. Just wanted to mention that uh, because, you know, there's still some questions around uh, when and if there's going to be a concert this year. If so, uh, you know, how big is it going to be? Well, I can tell you that it, there is going to be a show this year. It will be uh, significantly downscaled from previous years, which we've already discussed and I think have spoken to the media about. The concert day will be July 16th, that's Saturday, and we're looking forward to... Uh, Within the next, well, I think I'm confident in saying within the next month, we'll have the show put together and information available on what that will be, ticket prices and that kind of stuff. So we look forward to uh, keeping the Salmon Festival alive and getting back to its roots. And we know we've had a successful festival for over 30 years. And we know, uh, unfortunately, the last couple of years, things did not work out for us but we're gonna forge ahead and make sure that we put all our efforts into making this year's festival the best it can be. And we'd certainly encourage the community to get out and support and more information on that, as I said, is forthcoming. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Finn. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. With respect to long-term care beds, uh, you, um, we, as you said, we did meet with the minister Minister Al Hawkins and uh, MHA Jerry Dean to discuss uh, long-term care. 
And, you know, the report is detailed, and uh, honestly, I'm still going through it, uh, and I'm sure other councillors are. It's fresh in our hands, and we were fortunate to get a quick meeting with the minister. And, uh, but, you know, some of the, the basic problem, one of the basic problems seems to be rooted in the uh, demographic division of how long-term care beds were awarded to, uh, well, so I'll say awarded, uh, but is awarded based on need. So the, the population for an area surrounding the town of Gander versus the population surrounding the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. And they would allocate long-term care beds based on uh, that population, you know, which makes sense. Except for the entire population from Norris Arm, uh, from Norris Arm East was allocated to, uh, to, the, Gan to the town of Gander, right. which obviously- Right to Clarenville. Right to Clarenville. Uh, which obviously skewed the Ernest Young report in terms of the number of beds they would have to recommend. So however that base of the starting point of that report getting created, uh, got, uh, however those decisions, early decisions in that report got established, which I suggest are wrong, because uh, there's nothing that says that every resident in Lewisport uh, would would choose to live or uh, ch would choose a long-term care facility in Gander versus Grand Falls, Windsor. I mean, it's right in the middle. Certainly in North Arm, you wouldn't think you would, you would travel towards, uh, uh, towards Gander for long-term care. I mean, this long-term care is daily care by caregivers and proximity is key. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, however, we're going to spend, uh, we're gonna, uh, read the report in detail, review it, and we're going to get some answers. We're going to have some meetings, and and uh, as we go forward, council will solidify some form of formal position, uh, and uh, and exactly how we're going to uh, view that report as a council and recommendations that we think that government would need to change. Um, at the, end, at the end of the day, the current recommendations are 158 beds in Gander and 98 in Grand Falls, Windsor. But that re and part of the 150 in Gander replaces a 104 bed facility that's already in Gander. Not questioning the need to replace it, uh, but the resources seem to be skewed in one direction. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I, ju I just wanted to make a clarification on the capital. I mean, er uh, we're in the final year of a three-year capital plan, and the amount of uh, capital that we budgeted has not changed the total amount. And it seems like every meeting we discuss uh, some capital, like capital changes. Normally, if a tender comes in under or comes in over, we have to reallocate our funds within the, our three-year capital plan, and the total has not changed. And what this capital, the, what we call town-funded capital, is uh, an annual capital plan that we have to have to replace equipment uh, and do things that are normally not uh, covered under any government funded plan. And uh, that would re include vehicles and probably the largest item there is a new tandem truck uh, flyer for snow clearing uh, at 274,000. So that that's pretty well half of what we had. So I just want to make that clarification that this is this is not uh, a government funded, it's, uh, it's routine capital that we have to have to uh, refurbish our fleets and uh, do some work that uh, is not normally included in any government funded capital. Thank you for that clarification. And with that, any uh, other discussion, comments? Okay, hearing none, we have a mover and seconder, so all those in favor? Country minded. Motion carried. Next up, Finance and Administration, Councillor Pinsent. Finance Administration Committee met on Wednesday, February 3rd at 5 p.m. In attendance, Mayor Barry Manuel, Councillors Darren Finn, Bruce Moores, and Amy Cody Davis, along with myself as chair. Staff, Barry Griffin, Director of Finance and HR, and Town Manager, Mike Pinson. Labor report. The committee reviewed the labor cost as of week four. Total labor was 212,435, 
This was $10,658 under budget or 5.3% below budget. Staff recommends that staff continue to, the committee recommends that the staff continue to monitor labor cost. Chemical cost. Committee reviewed the chemical cost for the Exploits Regional Service Water Board Treatment Plant. That's a mouthful. Total cost for the year ended December 31st, 2015 was 206602 a decrease of $1,002 from the previous year. Taxation report. The committee was advised that the invoices for the taxation year have been sent out. The committee reviewed the taxation levy for 2015. Total taxes levied were $14,691,000 compared to a budget of $14,746,000. It is anticipated that the difference will be made up through supplementary assessments due construction during the year. Power consumption summary. The committee reviewed the power consumption summary for 2015. Total electrical costs were 558,414, an increase of $16,782, or 3% from the current from the previous year. The committee recommends the staff monitor and look for ways to further reduce consumption. Excite building. The committee reviewed the budget for the Excite building and current occupancy. The committee recommends that the space be made available for the school of nursing at a rate of $20 per square foot. Statistics Canada. The committee reviewed the inflation for 2015. Inflation for the year was 0.5%. As a result of this, there will be no cost of living adjustment for unionized workers as per the collective agreement. Funding request. The committee reviewed a request from the College of the North Atlantic Student Council to sponsor winter carnival activities. The committee rec recommends $200 be approved for this. The committee reviewed a request from the Grand Falls Windsor Minor Hockey Association for travel to Labrador for the Provincial Hockey Tournament. The committee recommends 1,000 be approved for this. The committee reviewed a request from the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts Senior Hockey Club for funding to attend the Allen Cup Senior Hockey Championship. The committee recommends that the budget for the trip be attained for future discussion. The committee reviewed a request from the Grand Falls Windsor Fire Department for a curling bond spiel in aid of muscular dystrophy. The committee recommends that $150 be approved for this. Defined Benefit Pension Plan. The committee reviewed the Defined Benefit Pension Plan transaction summary for 2015. Beginning balance for the year was $7,035,300. Ending balance for the year was $7,900,818. Committee recommends that the Director of Finance discuss our current investment mix and fund selection with our pension consultants. Grand Falls Windsor Golf Club. The committee reviewed the financial statements from the Grand Falls Windsor Golf Club. The committee was satisfied with the outcome and agrees to an advancement of a $25,000 grant. The committee recommends the Grand Falls Windsor Golf Club submit a budget for 2016 to ensure that debt obligations can be met. I move uh, findings of this committee. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Pinsent, seconded by Councillor Cody Davis. Any discussion or comment on the finance minutes? Hearing none, all those in favour? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Next up, we've got the minutes of the Exploits Regional Services Board meeting. Councillor Moores. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, the committee met on Wednesday, February the 10th, here at the Town Hall. Present was Jim Sampson, Monty Burt, Barry Saunders, Brian King, Scott Sevier, myself, Councillor Pinson, Mayor Barry Manuel, Deputy Mayor Finn, Mike Pinson, Jeff Saunders, Wayne Tate, Fiend Sampson, and Steve Chippett. 2015 operating cost and the 2016 budget. The board reviewed the detailed costs for 2015. The total operating costs were $761,721 compared to a budget of $812,214. The 2016 budget was presented and totaled $805,840. Also discussed were the shared costs for each town, including the payments or capital improvements for the plant that has been completed in the last few years. A 
chemical costs for the last four years were discussed. Whereas the treatment process has changed, the plant is consuming three chemicals, chlorine, alum, and hydrated lime. Price of these chemicals have increased drastically. Capital expenditures. The board reviewed the list of capital expenditures that have been completed as the plant at the plant from 2012 to 2014. There were six projects that totaled $3,059,239.39. These were funded by the provincial government as a 70-30 capital program through the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. These capital works have made su su sufficient improvements to the water treatment quality. Operating reports. The board reviewed an operating report outlining the work done at the plant on a regular basis. Also reviewed the provincial government drinking water quality report. The independent analysis of our water states that the TS TSMs and the HAA levels are well within the recommended guidelines recognized throughout the world. It ranks our water as 97 out of possible 100, which is exceptional. It was recommended that all towns have a vigorous flushing program this year to clean local transmission lines. Northern Iron, it was tentatively agreed that Northern Iron's population be included in Botwood's population for building. Botwood would recover the per capita amount from Northern Iron. It was also tentatively agreed that Northern Arm would have representation on the board. The town of Botwood confirms that there would be a chlorine booster station installed on the Northern Arm water main as well as flow meters. A revised agreement, a revised agreement that removes reference to the landfill operation as well as other minor changes were briefly discussed. Each town will review the agreement for the next meeting. Other business, Mayor Barry Manuel conducted an election of chairman for the Exploit Regional Service Board. The results of the elections were Mayor Scott Sevier was elected as chair and myself was elected as vice chair. The meeting was scheduled, the next meeting will be scheduled for Monday, March the 28th at the town hall in boardroom. The meeting adjourned at 9 p.m. and I move the recommendation of the report. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Moores and second by Councillor Pinsent. Any discussion on the minutes? Yeah, just ask the town manager maybe just the regional services board is something that might be foreign to some people so I'll ask uh, the town manager just to to sum it up for us so that people know exactly what it is and, and I guess a part of the revised agreement is that it will no longer be referred to as the Regional Service Board for reasons that you'll probably mention. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the water treatment plant uh, in uh, New Bay Road on Northern Iron Pond supplies the communities of Grand Falls, Windsor, Bishop Falls, Botwood and uh, so, sometime this year will supply water to uh, the town Northern Arm. And this, uh, what was called a regional services board and that we're proposing a name change because it's only dealing with uh, treated water, uh, the regional water supply committee. This committee meets on a, uh, or will meet on a semi-annual basis to discuss the uh, water treatment quality, uh, any operational concerns, uh, any capital expenditures that will be required in the future, uh, and these sorts of things. So uh, this was uh, the first meeting that we've had in, in a while, and uh, but there will be, we will return to regular meetings now. Uh, I think that's about it. Okay, Ready thank on? you. Yeah, it's uh, I just going back to look at a, a tweet I sent out, I think just after that meeting, um, a fact that came out of our meeting with the services board regarding drinking water, and I said uh, our water to the town of Grand Falls, Windsor, Botwood, Bishop's Falls, Peterview, and soon to be Northern Arm, 
has a 97% DWQI score, considered excellent rank. That's right. So it's, uh, our water, I think, uh, is pretty near pristine. I know sometimes you have trouble, and we all do, with discoloration and that, and that's uh, it's due to typically the, the, t the pipes and the flushing that goes on, and basically our pipes are what's dirty, not your water sometimes. Right. And even when your water is discolored, although it's not pretty to look at, it's still clean, uh, you know, and safe. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Point. Mayor, the yeah. uh, what what these uh, when when you say you get a, a really a score of ninety seven out of a hundred, we've had a hundred out of a hundred. Uh, that's the water that leaves the plant. That's the that's the treated water, and then it, uh, and th this is done by an independent uh, labs. Uh, the provincial government actually does the testing, and we get a report quarterly, and. Uh, Councillor Moore has re, re, referred to the HAAs and the THMs, and these are two uh, these are two chemicals that are uh, created when the chlorine, which is mandatory, you put in the water to disinfect it, reacts with any organic matter. And our our water treatment plant takes out nearly all of the organic matter, so that's and our readings there are lower than what the is actually World Health Organization sets the parameters for those two compounds. And there are not many water supplies in Newfoundland that actually meet that, uh, the, the guidelines, which is 100 parts per billion <laughs> and 80 parts per billion for the other. So uh, uh, we, we do, we are providing, you know, pristine water to the, the communities. But once the water gets into the community's transmission lines and water pipes and water mains, uh, that's where, it's, you know, over the years, there's been an accumulation of, uh, of uh, silt or, you know, and when, when somebody, if there's a water line break and the pipes get, get uh, hammered or, or get the water flow goes in an opposite direction, it dislodges some of these, some, some of this uh, buildup on the, on the pipes and winds up in uh, my wife's washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not very happy. <laughs> no. Okay, thanks for that. Um, any other comments on the Regional Service Board minutes? I think, uh, Mr. Yeah, Mayor, Deputy Mayor. I also it's probably important to add that the, the expense of $805,000 for operating the water treatment plant is shared on a per capita basis based on the last uh, Statistics Canada census reports. So that's how the expense is shared. So as we operate uh, water, uh, water treatment and water distribution as far as the town bound, respective town boundaries go is uh, done for 805,000. Obviously there are additional cap <coughs> capital expenses which are shared also on a per capita basis. And the town of Grand Falls is the lead uh, community and administers uh, and manages the water treatment plant. So I just wanted to add those important facts as well. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Finn. Okay, we have a mover and a seconder. Any other discussion? Uh, did we, I thought uh, Councillor Pinson, yes. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Country reminded. Motion carried. Next up, uh, notice of motion. Do we have any notice of motion? No notice of motion. So we'll move right into other business. And I believe last time I started with Councillor Cody Davis. So this time I'll start with Deputy Mayor Finn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to uh, mentioned tonight. Uh, the first thing is I want to congratulate uh, Councillor Moores and Cecilia Hickey uh, and our partner in Central Health, Rosemary Goodger, and all of the participants of the Wellness Hub and the recent announcement uh, of the Wellness Hub as part of the age work of the Age Friendly Committee is a very important work that's, doing, that's going on there. And I won't get into the details. I'm, uh, I'm sure others uh, plan to talk about that uh, initiative. But I do want to congratulate Councillor Moores and all the council for their participation and all the partners. And the videos, I had a look at uh, most of them. Um, 
and they're all uh, excellent information that uh, is very innovative, very innovative way to get the message out about the resources that are around us uh, for seniors and caregivers who are all going to require this information at some point in our lives uh, while we take care of our seniors and as we become seniors ourselves. Hopefully in way down the road for me, you know, way, way, way down the road. Yeah. <laughs> I was certainly Councillor Moores, I will not speak for you. <laughs> um, the other thing uh, Mr. Mayor wanted to uh, mention tonight was uh, ironically, in the past uh, three weeks, I've had uh, different citizens approach me about uh, street lighting in two areas. One area is the, uh, is the turn on, uh, where Duggan Street intersects with the new access road onto Trans Canada Highway and where you can come off the Trans Canada Highway by the RCMP station, so where that intersects with Duggan Street. Um, and uh, and so it was mentioned to me by a citizen that it was very dark, a very dark area, and they couldn't really tell uh, where to make the turn to. If you're coming from, uh, let me see if I, the SPCA, I'll say if you're coming from the SPCA's direction towards uh, towards that new uh, intersection change towards Transcan now, or continuing on up towards uh, the the transportation works depot and, and the ultramar. If you're heading in that direction, uh, a resident mentioned to me that it's very dark. I did go and check it out and I agree it was indeed dark. Uh, the other uh, area that was reported to me as being, being very dark by a totally different citizen, just, uh, just I guess it's kind of ironic that it was about Transcanada Highway exits, was the other one was off Scott Avenue. When you're going from Scott Avenue, from if you're traveling from our downtown area, towards Bishop Falls and then you have to take and you want to get onto the Trans Canada Highway uh, ramp and head on towards Bishop Falls as you get up just past the Exploit Ski Club. Uh, also a dark area. Uh, so um, I, I did have a discussion with our Director of Engineering Works. Street lighting is, uh, uh, is as Council would know, is already in the works for the intersection on Duggan. That was part of our, 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 uh, uh, our traffic change there. Uh, so that issue will, do, will take care of itself as part of our council's earlier decision anyway. Uh, but in our next public works committee, we'll talk about uh, the, in, the intersection um, off Scott Avenue towards, tra towards Trans Canada Highway. And, um, and maybe we'll have some idea of some cost, but it, then council can make a decision um, uh, and uh, the need to put street lights there in that area or not. Um, so that's the only two things I had tonight, Mr. Mayor, that I wanted to raise. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Finn. Councilor Pinson. Uh, I haven't got very much tonight, three pages or something. Uh, <laughs> really looking down, I know the joke. Uh, just like a couple of congratulations I'd like to send out. Uh, last couple of weeks, the Parks and Rec Department have been extremely busy. It made us all extremely proud. First of all, with the winter loot, lots of snow. Got that one mixed up. Should have had it reversed, but anyway. Uh, winter loot was highly successful. And, uh, and also, this past weekend, uh, the biver. We had the biver without snow. But the event was still really, really successful. Very successful, uh, not only just in participation, but financial-wise as well. And on Sunday, when I was going back up to pick up a few things, I seen a strange thing moving up the highway and I thought it was a moose or, but it wasn't, it was our director of uh, Parks and Rec jogging up to the golf course so <laughs> I commended him on that because I started getting tired just going to the van so but anyway pass on congrats to your, uh, your team uh, at uh, Parks and Rec, a lot of people had a, a lot of work went into that and it was heartbreaking to see the, the heavy rain come and take the snow away but besides that the food was excellent Entertainment was excellent. I think everybody really, really enjoyed both events, but especially the Biver. And uh, I haven't eaten since the Biver. It was still stuff from the Biver, so well done. Uh, a couple other well dones to uh, College North Atlantic team that uh, just got back from Qatar, in the state of Qatar in the Middle East, uh, where they competed in international competition and they finished second in the business case competition. So 
well done to them. And there's another team heading tomorrow. I, I don't remember. We had to go to went to university and that business and the things like. You remember any of that when we went to university and college? I don't remember any trips to Cat or Halifax. We might have gone to a grocery store at once. Yeah, <laughs> we're kicked off campus, I would say. But anyway, they're heading. Another team is heading tomorrow to compete in a, an Atlantic Championships in Halifax. So good luck to them. Also, college is doing a lot this week. This is their winter carnival which myself and uh, the mayor is booked to go tomorrow and serve breakfast to all the hungry students and all any other councils or staff would like to come up with us 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and shuffle eggs. You're more than welcome. Uh, of course, what was in the news media this week was the RCMP pilot project for 24-7 coverage. And uh, I'd like to a couple of commends to, well, we've been talking about a spearheaded by our mayor and our deputy mayor who've been the forefront of this, and of course staff who've been uh, trying to get more of a police presence in our community and it was council. And I have to say thanks to the RCMP and to the Minister of Justice and our two MHAs, uh, Mr. Hopkins and uh, Mr. Dean for all they did. And finally this pipe project is going to, uh, is going to launch and uh, we hope to see some, a lot of improvement. So I'm sure it's going to be a, a building exercise, but we uh, commend them for that. Uh, snow removal was discussed earlier, and uh, of course it's been, you know, there has to be a priority list, and some people are upset and saying, well, my job, I have to move at a minute's notice. If you're in a place 20 minutes from your work and you have to move at a minute's notice, you know, your employer probably should have you stay on site or on premise. If there's a priority list that's happened, and I think our staff do, and our snow removers do a, an incredible job. You know, uh, this is a big town and growing, we haven't grown the equipment to the size because you know it's just so expensive to do, but they do an incredible job. People have to be patient, uh, especially when the snowstorm that we had that continued on until late morning. So it takes a while, so be patient. I think most people are, but some people could get frustrated, and I can understand frustration, but there is a priority process to this, and I would ask the people to be patient. And once again, pass on to your slow mover cru crews. I think they did an exemplary job again, as they always do. Uh, I have to say this is going to be the last night that there's going to be just five councillors, well, the mayor, deputy mayor, and three councillors as there's an election coming. Seven uh, people have put their names forward. Uh, I wish them all luck, uh, but to say to the residents, you know, get out and vote because uh, it's an important thing as your chance and is your time to, to give a vote. And these people are out and they're working day and night, some of them, to try to get the message out in uh, not the best of weather conditions. So. Uh, I look forward to working with the new two new councillors that are coming on. We're part of a team. We all are of a team. We don't always agree. As anybody around the table will always say, we don't agree, but we take issue by issue and we speak our minds and we respect everybody else's opinion. And I look forward to working with the next two councillors that are coming in. Uh, just a quick thing on the Salmon Festival. Somebody asked me about Salmon Festival today and the mayor mentioned it. And of course, you know, Salmon Festival is, is yes, we're going to scale it down. It's not going to be the mega show. It's not going to be the million dollar show. For obvious reasons, we're going to take it down. However, is it going to be downscaled as for being a fun event and a great event? I don't think so. I think probably this is an opportunity to make it. And it's a community event. We don't need to be a provincial event. We're going to be a community event. And we're going to try to have some fun on this the 25th year of the amalgamation of Grand Falls, Windsor. And so people stay tuned. There's going to be things coming. And there's going to be other events in addition to the Salmon Festival. And that's all I have today. Thank you, Councillor Pinsent. Councillor Moores. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I also would like to add my congratulations to the Parks and Rec staff on the uh, winter loot. Again, it was a, a great year, and uh, most of the events were, were uh, maximized when it comes to numbers. We had uh, a great turnout from the town, and thank the staff on our behalf. The Midwinter Viver was uh, very successful this year. As uh, you've seen on the, uh, on the Facebook, was the so out sign was up, and that, that's, uh, that's just great. It's too bad the, uh, the snow was slowed a few things down, but, uh, but every, the, the other events were 100% participation, and uh, a great job, so congratulate the staff. Uh, the uh, news conference last week, the launch of our Seniors Wellness Hub, I uh, just want you to know this is a series of online videos to be seen on the social media and our town website and soon to be available on DVD. The intent of these videos are to provide our seniors 
family members and caregivers the resource information to make informed decisions on matters including mental health, physical activities, social events, housing, home care, and other important aspects of aging in Grand Falls, Windsor. The uh, videos can be viewed online, and you get that at uh, www.gfwseniors.com. I would like to uh, say thank you to the staff members and to our presenters for their support on this project. Again, that number for, uh, to, to view the, uh, the videos is uh, www.gfwseniors.com. And finally, Mr. Mayor, the Boy Scouts were here the, uh, this tonight, and I'd like to uh, just announce that the fundraiser is on again this year, the TV, uh, or the radio auction and the TV auction online. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great fundraiser for the Scouts, and I encourage people to go online and they can use the, uh, they get online by going scoutauction.ca and support the local group and have lots of fun with the bidding. I know I did last year and the bidding closes on Saturday night at 12 midnight. So get online and support the Scouts and have lots of fun bidding against your neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moores. Councillor Cody Davis. Thank you. A few items for me this evening. First off, uh, the Exploits Regional Chamber of Commerce held the 17th Annual Business Excellence Awards and Hall of Fame induction uh, last Thursday. I want to send out congratulations to some of the businesses here in Grand Falls, Windsor. The Classic Theater won Small Business of the Year. Uh, Central Newfoundland Hospital Auxiliary won the Helping Hands Award. Uh, Dennis Cooper won the Customer Service Award. City Tire and Auto Center won the Business Growth Award. Business Woman of the Year was Joan Horwood. Business of the Year Award went to Grant's Footwear. The Hollett Family was uh, the winner of the Desmond Kenny Family Award. And Newtown Cleaners and Restoration was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So uh, thanks to the Chamber for again this year uh, uh, doing that event and of course to all those who were nominated and of course to the winners. Uh, the Status of Women Central have a couple of um, nice events coming up, pretty cool event actually. Uh, Women 14 Plus, a free self-defense class uh, which is going to happen Saturday, February 27th. And uh, the instructor is Michelle Critch, so I have no doubt that you will be able to kick some uh, patootie once you leave that class, no problem. Uh, she certainly knows her stuff. And uh, this event, I believe, may be uh, maxed out and has been, um, there's been so much interest that I think they're doing another event uh, in March. So if you don't get into this event, uh, make sure that you uh, do attend the next one, which I will be, so watch out. <laughs> <laughs> no more baloney. That's defense, though. That's right, it's defense. <laughs> yeah, defensive classes. So anyway, uh, that's an important event, and I would encourage uh, women to certainly participate in that. Also, the Status of Women uh, Central are having International Women's Day dinner on Thursday, March 10th, and that's going to be held at the Royal Canadian Legion. Uh, the guest speaker is Linda Ross, who is the President and CEO of the uh, Newfoundland Labrador Provincial Advisory Council on the Status of Women, and that event sells out very quickly, so I would encourage you to uh, purchase your tickets uh, soon, and you can contact the Status of Women Central at 489-8919 to uh, book your tickets, and tickets are $20 each, and that event sells out very quickly as well. Uh, congratulations going out to the Community Studies class at the College of the North Atlantic who uh, over the weekend on February 20th um, had a night without a home where several of the students of the Community Studies class did um, sleep outdoors uh, in vehicles parked in parking lots around town and uh, the event was very successful. They had food bins set up at different locations. They collected $200 in cash and had several of the food bins filled. So they're going to use the $200 to purchase more food items for the food bank and uh, they'll be prevent, uh, presenting 
um, that to the Salvation Army uh, sometime tomorrow. So um, thank you to everyone in the community who supported that uh, very important event and certainly um, you know, a, an important event to bring awareness to people who are um, unfortunate enough to have to live in poverty and a lot of times uh, live as a, you know in homelessness. So uh, hats off to the community studies class for bringing awareness to that and we look forward to um, that uh, event certainly continuing into the future as well. Uh, myself, uh, Mayor Manuel, and Councillor Pinsent are going to be attending uh, central regional meetings this weekend in Gander, municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, just some of the items um, that we'll be talking about will be community sustainability partnerships, uh, property assessments, which I'm sure is going to be a very well attended and um, interesting, to say the least, session. Uh, 911 and also uh, the future of fire departments is also on the agenda so um, it's full um, Friday evening and all day Saturday so we're looking forward to bringing back some important information from uh, that session. Um, the, uh, we talked about the election which is coming up and I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Rogers who will be hosting uh, in the Chamber of Commerce who are hosting a candidates forum which will take place uh, Thursday, February 25th, beginning at seven o'clock at the Royal Canadian Legion. Um, for those of you who cannot uh, be in attendance in person for that event, it will air on Rogers at 10.30 that same night, as well as on the uh, Rogers YouTube channel. So we would encourage residents to certainly watch the forum and um, come out and meet the candidates and, and chat with them uh, before and after the forum and uh, make informed decisions um, when you go to the polls on March the 8th. Um, and unfortunately, I won't be at the forum. I will be watching it on TV. I have been invited to attend the Miss Bishop's Falls pageant during the Winter Carnival in Bishop's Falls, so I'll be at that pageant um, on Thursday night and uh, have the difficult task of choosing, um, I'm sure, a wonderful young lady who will represent the town of Bishop's Falls for the next year. So um, I'm looking forward to that event and thanks to the committee for the invitation. Just a couple other things. Um, again, uh, Councillor Moores and, and uh, Councillor Pinson spoke about Winterlude already, but I did want to highlight a couple of events and one of them was highlighted quite frequently on my Facebook page actually while I was participating. And uh, that was the Canvas Art and Wine event. And I have to say, that was uh, such a fun event. Um, it was sold out. They had two groups. One did, um, gosh, I can't even remember the right terms now. That's One, <laughs> it wasn't the wine. It was my inexperience as an artist. <laughs> But uh, one was a pastel or a watercolor, uh, they were doing drawings, and the other group actually painted a picture. I was in the group that painted a picture. And uh, it hangs proudly over my fireplace. Um, but uh, the instruction was great for that event. Everybody who attended had a fantastic time. And uh, Canvas was very pleased with the attendance and the outcome and are looking to uh, do more events. So I would encourage anybody who had interest in that to certainly uh, look for that event in the coming uh, time frame and certainly participate. Uh, Corduroy Brook Family Fun Day again was a huge success as always thanks to all the community uh, businesses for their sponsorship for that event. The Windsor Pentecostal Family Breakfast again was a huge success. Um, a lot of donations there for the food bank and uh, a great breakfast to get you going for the day for sure. The Ski Club, their activities, their um, scavenger hunt and their open house, I believe the uh, turnout for those were unbelievable. I think they loaned out, I don't know, over 85 pairs of snowshoes or something. And anyway, it was just, it was great. They couldn't get over the people who attended all of that. So again, uh, hats off to the Winterloo Committee and our Parks and Rec staff. Oh, and I want to give one other shout out as well to uh, Papa Sweet Shop who came on board this year as a sponsor for the um, 
Teddy Bear Parade. We changed the route this year. Normally we go from Church Road Park down around the dummy on High Street and back to the park for hot chocolate and loot bags. This year we started at the Corduroy Brook Building on Main Street, walked to Papa's Sweet Shop and back to the Corduroy Brook Building. Uh, Papa's Sweet Shop normally are not open on Sundays. They open specifically for the event. Um, they, the children walked into Papa's Sweet Shop. They were given a giant triangular chocolate chip cookie. Um, they had popcorn, they had nachos for the children, they had uh, hot chocolate served outside. There were um, Mickey and Minnie Mouse were there as well as uh, Gus the Moose. And was there another? No, I think it was Mickey, Minnie and Gus the Moose. Anyway, so I wanted to say thanks to um, Bob and his staff and family members who uh, partnered with us this year. It certainly put a new twist on the event and the kids really enjoyed it, so hats off to them. Anti-bullying day tomorrow, February 21st. It's a 24th pink shirt day. So I would encourage everybody to wear pink tomorrow to raise awareness against anti-bullying. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cody Davis. I got a few things to add there. Um, I guess I too would like to add congratulations to the Parks and Rec staff for what was a wonderful winter loot and uh, well attended events and thanks to all the community groups who took part. I know there were many and the participation was fantastic and we had wonderful weather for the winter loot. Not so much for the biver, but as was mentioned earlier, despite the fact that our snow was taken from us, we had to cancel the rides, staff made the best of it and uh, gave people the opportunity to cancel out if they wished. Some from out of town did do that, but they were quick to say that they would be back next year. And for those that did take part in the uh, food events on Friday evening and Saturday afternoon and evening, it's just fantastic. And they uh, stayed well into the evening and it was a, a good event. So a lot of, uh, I guess, adjustments having to take place by staff and they did a fantastic job doing that. It was a good time had by all and we look forward to many uh, such events in the future when it comes to the midwinter biver. Uh, we mentioned earlier that we met with Minister Hawkins and MHA Jerry Dean on Friday. I won't go through all the uh, topics that came up, but one thing I would like to, for the record, bring out, and I'm not sure if we spoke specifically about this before, I, I believe we might have, uh, is the intersection, now that uh, Minister Hawkins is the Minister of Transportation and Works, the intersection at the Way Scales and the Trans-Canada Highway has been a problem area for us now for some time and we've been asking government to make changes to the intersection to make it safer. We obviously realize that it's a difficult intersection even for experienced drivers but we do have a high school very near there. Uh, a lot of the traffic that is using that intersection stopping at that stop sign, uh, school buses and very, very young drivers. And for that reason alone, and not to mention the fact that it's just not well set up when you look to your left, stopped at a stop sign, and you see the double lane of traffic, including a passing lane coming at you, a semi-blind hill, and vehicles traveling well at a over 100 kilometers an hour, it's just not a safe uh, entrance onto the highway. So we did get a positive response in terms of they will look at that, and we hope that that will happen and certainly I encourage residents who uh, frequent that intersection or recognize it as an issue to have their voices heard as well. So we'll continue to work on that, but I just wanted to make mention of it. Um, Special Olympics were mentioned, I believe earlier. We uh, are having a little bit of a Special Olympics send off this weekend on Sunday afternoon. Uh, there is a group of policemen that are coming through on a walk across the province. They're gonna meet at the Mount Payton Hotel <laughs> at 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon. And uh, we do have a couple of members of our local uh, Exploits Hurricanes Club who will be traveling to Cornerbrook to participate and to compete in the 2016 National Special Olympics. And I know Melvin Hannums, uh, very familiar to most everybody I think in town is, is one athlete and I think is it Stacy? Uh, Stacy Woolridge, I believe, is the other who uh, are representing our province. And we will be making a uh, trek from the Mount Payton to Centennial Field. 
where there's going to be some uh, games in that set up for the people that are there, and then they're going to head to the curling club, and there's some refreshments and a little social at the curling club after. So I'd invite everybody and anybody to come out if they wish for Sunday afternoon and meet us at the Mount Payton at 3 o'clock. And also, Rogers Television will have live coverage of the opening ceremonies of the Corner Brook National Special Olympics next Tuesday evening, March the 1st at 7 p.m. And again, a lot of the events that are being held in Corner Brook will be on Rogers' YouTube station. So if anybody wanted to go on and take in some of the Special Olympics, which you know I've raved about here before, I know, and uh, we, we'd like to cheer on our own athletes and all the athletes as they enjoy that great experience, and you can do so on Rogers' YouTube. Um, the uh, well-documented, I guess, uh, challenges uh, uh, medically with a local teacher, I'd like to uh, mention Wendy King, who is a teacher at Millcrest Academy and uh, has been uh, facing a big challenge with needing a double lung transplant, and she'll be traveling to Toronto uh, in the end of March to have that uh, procedure done, I understand. And it's a good... She ha actually, she has to travel there to be close. If yeah. uh, the lung okay. transplant becomes available, she has to be within the vicinity to uh, uh, get the operation as quickly as possible. So she has to be in the area waiting. Right. So there's no guarantee of time frame as to when it will happen, but they have to be there in case something does come available. Gotcha, and thanks for that clarification. And that uh, is a good reason why there's so many uh, community groups and individuals who seem to have stepped up to help financially, and there's fundraisers going on. I know the Moral Fundamentals Family Fitness have a, a trek to Toronto, they're calling it, where people, I believe, are biking. Uh, certain kilometers and collecting pledges, and there's uh, a uh, Millcrest Academy have had a talent show tonight that is raising funds, and there's there's a bunch of th things going on for for Wendy, and uh, obviously a tough time for her and her family. It's a good example of how our community is quick to step up when it comes to this sort of situation. And I know Wendy, and I know she has a very very positive outlook on things and a positive attitude, and I'm sure that will help her as she continues to face this, which is likely the biggest challenge of her life. So I'd encourage everybody to, uh, to get out and support that cause. And uh, hopefully before long, uh, Wendy will be back and good as new and back to 100% good health. Um, of course, most people would know I got to mention the Cataracts. The Cataracts uh, uh, won the semifinal series against the Gander Flyers this past weekend, and now they'll face the Cornerbrook Royals in the finals, which will start at the Joe Burns Stadium this weekend, Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. So I encourage everybody to get out and cheer on the team as they are trying to go for a three-peat of herders, which I can't remember in recent history the last time that's happened, but uh, it would be a big accomplishment. So get out and cheer on the cataracts. Um, just a couple more things. But one thing I, I wanted to mention is... Uh, uh, a friend of mine and a friend of a lot of people in the community passed away, unfortunately, uh, about a week ago now uh, in Bev Butler. And I just wanted to pass my condolences uh, along on behalf of the town to the family. Um, I know Jared and I are, are good friends. And it was tough, you know. She went through uh, this battle with cancer for many years. And anybody who knows Bev knows uh, what a passionate person she is. She did uh, a lot of great work for the Grand Falls Windsor Heritage Society. Uh, there's many stories about how she had positive impacts on the students that she taught in their career as a teacher and later as a principal. And uh, she just had great passion for her community. And she's going to be sorely missed. And uh, it's always a sad time. It's never easy, you know, and this is no different. So, again, just... I uh, want to pass along condolences to the Butler family, and, uh, and I think it's important that the town recognize uh, Bev. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention has been mentioned already, but again, we got two empty seats here that at our next council meeting we will be filling. Uh, and as Councillor Cody Davis said, I would encourage everybody to get out and exercise the right to vote. We have a slate of very capable and strong candidates there and looking forward to getting a couple of uh, more people in here to help us with what sometimes is, uh, is a tough job of
trying to run the community and direct. So best of luck to all the candidates. The voting will take place on Saturday, March the 5th is the advance poll, which will happen at the seniors complex on Edwards Place, correct? And no, oh, hall. at the far hall, I'm going, oh, sorry. So advanced polling is at the far hall. And then on uh, the election day, which is March the 8th, on a Tuesday, you can check your, uh, the advertiser or uh, uh, the Facebook page with all the polling stations for the various addresses. And again, good luck to everybody. And we look forward to uh, having a full slate again. So with that, I don't have anything else. Uh, I guess I need to look for a motion to adjourn. Sure. Councillor Morse. Seconder, Councillor Cody Davis. All those in favor? Aye. Country minded. Motion carried. <laughs>